No. But first, with the coronation just over a week away, we sent Juliet Sear to Highgrove House, the King's Country residence, to try a hand at making a favourite royal cake. Let's have a look. <laughs> The whole country will come together to mark the coronation of King Charles III when he's crowned on May the 6th. And to celebrate this historic occasion, I'm taking a trip to some of His Majesty's favourite places, discovering his passions and sharing some royal recipes fit for a king. King Charles III is well known for his love of gardening and nature, so what better place to come than the grounds of his country home? Highgrove House in Gloucestershire has been His Majesty's main family residence since 1980. King Charles renovated the house, installed an organic farm and raised his sons William and Harry here. It remains his home with Camilla, the Queen Consort. And since the purchase of Highgrove, the green-fingered monarch has spent years designing and developing the gardens. The overall grounds extend to 15 acres, which are now split into a collection of beautiful gardens. Fun fact, that is the tree house where William and Harry used to play. I could spend hours exploring the gardens, but it's time to find out a little bit more about His Royal Highness and his inspiration behind Highgrove. Well, His Majesty's been here for, you know, many, many decades. And I think what's really interesting about Highgrove Gardens is that they're such a reflection of those principles that, that he holds really dear, whether you're talking about organic gardening or whether you're talking about living in harmony with nature. And what's especially interesting is how that's reflected in the work of the Princess Foundation as well. So we as a charity took on stewardship of the gardens about two years ago. And all the educational delivery that we have on site takes those principles on board as well. So it's lovely to see those reflected in what we put out as a charity. Is gardening one of his true passions? I mean, I would say so. You know, the gardens that you see here today have been created from nothing. It was a blank canvas. So everything that you see here today is something that he's created. It's a real reflection of of him and his passions. So, Mel, you look after the kitchen garden. You've obviously got your work cut out. Yes. <laughs> what sort of things do you grow here? Uh, so we grow everything. Um, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli, raspberries, rhubarb, cut flowers, everything. And with all that amazing produce, what do you do with it? Um, so we grow for His Majesty, so he gets fresh organic veg, fruit and flowers and anything he doesn't eat we give to our restaurant on site so visitors can come and have a bit of the produce as well. So with all these amazing flowers, you must have some beehives? Yes we do, yet yeah, we produce honey that gets sold at Fortnum and Mason's. We've actually got some high growth produce for you to do a lot of baking at home, <gasps> including the honey. Oh that's so kind <laughs> of you, I can't wait to get in the kitchen. Brilliant, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> I have my high grove honey and I'm going to use this to make a very royal Battenberg. This cake was originally made to mark the wedding of King Charles's great-grandparents, Princess Victoria and Prince Louis of Battenberg. So I'm starting off by creaming my butter and sugar. Add the almond extracts and the eggs one at a time and mix. So I've got my flour, then my ground almonds baking powder. Just give that a nice whisk through to distribute all the powders together. Just going to put the whole amount into the wet mixture. And two tablespoons of milk. Give it a mix. I've weighed them out so they're equal and now I'm just going to make this one pink. I divided my tin in half with baking paper. Then just smooth down each half. So that's ready to go in the oven now at 160 fan for about 25 to 30 minutes until it's completely cooked through. OK, so the cakes are done. They're all cooled down. Trim the edges and cut the sponges in half so you have four lengths. Clear down all the crumbs before you roll out your marzipan. And dust the surface in icing sugar. I've warmed the honey so I can spread it nice and thinly all over the marzipan. Just wanted to bring a touch of high grove to this Battenberg cake. Carefully lift your first length of sponge. Stack the sponges to create a checkerboard effect. Spread over with some more honey. 
So you just want to sort of lift the marzipan up and over the top. Trim the marzipan to create a neat seal and finally pat the sides with cake smoothers or just use your hands to make it nice and straight. You're just going to trim right through the sponge and the marzipan to create that nice clean edge. I've got one final touch, some little royal high grove honeybees. There's a nod to the honey inside the cake. A royal recipe with a salute to high grove. Oh, that was oh. nice, wasn't it? Have you got any bad going coming? No, babe, sorry. I'm so sorry. I'll make you one, though. Now that we know how to make it, I'll make you one. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to go in those gardens? Imagine nice you need a bunch of flowers, you just go to the garden and get them. Just get them. You don't have to go to the shop, the florist. Well, Prince Charles loves you, be easy. Oh, that's so true. Why do I keep calling him Prince Charles? <laughs> oh, no, I know, King Charles. It's a lifetime of it, isn't it? It's, it's one of those things. What about Well, listen.